<laughs> right, so I'll do a little bit. I added a bit more on just so you could hear to make more interest. No, that's not what it is. That's just a commercial. <laughs> you want to read that book if you haven't done it. Right. What I'm going to tell you about now is about catching snook. I've written a piece for uh, for the magazine on it, so there'll be all the detail in there. But I thought this might be true. And they really are. They're so much like bass, it's true. Now. First real taste of tropical fishing was in. T when did we go, Steve? The first. <coughs> time? Do you remember? Uh, twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty years ago. Yeah. I've probably been twenty times now. To Tobago. And if the fish are there, it's often blindingly obvious. You can see the fish under that shoal of bait fish there. Look. See the hole. <laughs> they don't hang about above so anything. This is a tarpon or something underneath them. They don't hang about. And we caught, we used a bass gear. It's, a, it's exactly the same gear apart from a wire trace usually. So all the fish we catch, we fish from the shore 99% of the time I think now. And catch all sorts of fish on the bass tackle. And it's good fun catching this. And we fancied catching snook really because they're a bit like bass. I mean they, they look like them and they more or less behave like them, except that they will jump out of the water when you've got them on sometimes. And uh, that one was an accidental catch. It was, I think that was one of the first ones I caught. It was one year we went when there was a hurricane. Hurricane Ivan. That's right, Ivan. And in fact, shortly before I took had that picture taken, and I expect Steve took the picture, um, shortly before I had the picture taken, I couldn't see my pals. They were stood about 50 yards back along the beach. And the rain was coming down so hard, I couldn't see where they were. And what I'd done, I'd laid my spinning rod against the mangroves, and the fly was still in the water. So I, I thought, oh, I'm sick of this. And I thought, I'll just put, pick the spinning rod up. And this fish took the fly that was just lying in the edge of the water. So it was an absolute fluke, that one. But I thought it was a really lovely fish, really bass-like fish. But then found a year or two later, when my son and I went, stayed in one of the hotels, a place called Magdalena Grand, that there's a golf course, which is of no interest to me whatsoever, <coughs> beside the hotel. And on the golf course there are a number of ponds, which clearly have some access to the sea, because in these ponds we discovered were tarpon and snook and snappers. snappers. You get all sorts of things. They must make their way in as little tiny fish because there's no significant outflows. I mean, little ditches you would call them. But you get quite big fish. You know, I've seen, I've never caught a real monster there, but I've seen tarp and, and snook in the sort of 20 and 30 pound class. I've had them on the line. And little ones. And it's always enjoyable when you're fishing these places. That's a small, I mean by tarpon standards it's tiny, but on the fly gear it's good fun. And we've got snook as well. That was on a jig. So you can use all sorts of different methods, here, but the snook are generally on the small. I did, a, I did hook a big <coughs> snook in the pond and it was a, it was a fairly interesting thing. I was, there was a big wedding on in a hotel. It must have been somebody with a lot of money. And the photographers had clearly got sick of taking pictures of these, uh, the bride and groom and all the family. And they saw me fishing down in this pond. I was ignoring what was going on behind me. I was fishing, spinning a red hill in this pond. And I hooked this mother and father of all snook. And I, th these photographers thought, where is the chance? And they're snapping away behind me. And I think I'll get a really quality picture, you know, they'll have me in the, national, in the local paper <laughs> this week, so to say. And I got it and I thought, oh, I've got it now. No net or anything like that, typical of me. No net, and I got it right at the edge. And I thought, I've got it now, and I'm just thinking about and it, and it suddenly zoomed off into the lilies and pinged a wire trace among this patch of water. So, <laughs> so I was absolutely gutted, so no pictures in the, the in the paper. Oh, it's a cracking it's burned in my mind. <laughs> anyway, 
But the sea always seemed more interesting there rather than these. Well, I mean, it's all right fishing in pond, but it's not, it's not the same, is it? So we do a lot of fishing from the shore, and we found we can catch a snook. I'm sure that's my son Richard and my third son, and he, he's just as crappy as I am. He'll fish for anything, any time. So we catch lots of these snook, not far from where we go in the hotel. See the place is a nice, nice little beach there. And these fish bite like stink, and they often jump. And that beach there, you can catch jacks, tarpon, and, and snook, and it's bonefish. Ten, yeah, ten minutes from the hotel. <coughs> and these snook are wonderful things, I think. I mean, it's just like bass fishing. If you like, if you like bass fishing, you'd enjoy doing doing that. And they're not all they're not all big, but you see that one of my slanders made from a sort of glued together uh, sluggo and a, and a sand, super sandra thing and they look just like eels and these snook take them, they take clubs and everything and even the big stretch of sandy beach can be very good better, probably better where there's a bit of mucky water, a bit of weed and some uh, mangroves and rocks but you can catch them off the beach you know? I sent my my, at least went down with my son and he walked miles along the beach. He, he's a lot fitter than me, I don't understand that. <laughs> and uh, I saw him trudging back with something in his hand. Oh, you miserable sod. And he had this 20 pounder that he caught on the uh, it doesn't look It doesn't look uh, too... Now, I don't like those lip grippy things, which he had, but the fish got eaten anyway. So. And fly fishing work from the beaches too. And again, it's yeah. much better than catching <coughs> stinking little trout. <laughs> now, he now Richard's now moved to Brazil. He lives in Brazil. He lived in Brazil for ten years. So we go out there to see the grandchildren. We, my wife, and for me, we fish a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's my. The eldest granddaughter, the one on the right there, and the youngest one on the left. This is a couple of years back, but uh, um, you can see I can see she's going to be an angler anyway. The older one, <laughs> and there's plenty of wildlife. See them eating carcasses of turtles on the beach. And uh, <laughs> when he went there, we had to do. Oh, you go through the whole rigmarole when you go somewhere new. You have to start from scratch and learn how to fish all over again. And we started doing what the locals did, a can of beer in a <laughs> And the fishing was quite interesting. We caught a variety of things, you know, puffers and, and uh, things like that, leather jacket, top, top one there. And you can see there, just behind where I'm standing, is a fish trap. Now every quarter of a mile along these beaches are fish traps, which some of them are now derelict. They've obviously been there for centuries. People, <coughs> the ones that are used, the people come down every day at low tide and they empty the fish trap. And it has to have an impact on the fishing of this. Because even when nobody goes and empty them, these things are still the fishing. I'll show you at the end of this what I mean. And the beaches are huge. You go, they go for hundreds of miles and you can often spin on these beaches but it's a nice place to go and it's lovely fishing but they often appear to be fishless because God did we try hard but I did catch one of the early trips I caught a small snook on a red hill and that was a, a good sign I thought and then Richard that year bought himself a little one man kayak it's crap to be honest, I don't know, I don't know how he did it, when it's got bigger holes than it has where he sits in. <laughs> but, but he goes out, he goes out there and fishes and he had more or less instant success. So he had this 23 pounder, now he's never done it again. I don't see how he's caught plenty of fish from the pack, but he's never had another one of these snook. That was on a lure, that one. 
and it's a good long story, but I won't tell it because I don't know all the details. And then on my next visit, no, now we knew there was big snook there. We started looking. We don't go very far. Again, my my principle is, if it takes me longer to get to the fishing than I spend when I'm there, I won't bother going. So 20 minutes drive is plenty for me, and we do the same in Brazil. And we drove to this place. There's a uh, it's called Mermaid Beach. The a big statue of a nude mermaid at the end. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Wonder if rouse you or anything. And the fish from this, this there's a, you have to walk through a little river at the back of this reef here, and then you can fish off the front of the reef. Now, that is an incredibly calm day fishing off there. Usually, the waves are coming up and smacking you in the chest. On that. So I'm getting, I really am getting cold. The way we started to catch snook on, on the lures, that again was another slanderer. And it's always full of weed. So the weed and soft plastics are in godsend. They've been a godsend here in the, in the, for the past. And uh, we had some cracking fish. And it's, it's real good fun trying to get one of these things out on them, on them rocks. You can see the weed on that. Plant, you know. See what it's like when you're trying to play them. Never easy. And we had some stonking. That was that was the best one. Um, in fact, I was just told before that that was a not a very good picture. Um, it's fuzzy apparently, so I have to go look and see what kind of thing. But that was the best one we've had so far. But and it's not always easy. I mean, you don't catch them every time you go out. It's, uh, it's really good, and the, you can see how bass they the army. So the fishing in Brazil isn't easy. I'll just tell you, just to finish off, I don't really want to hear any of this, but I'll tell you a little bit more about it. <coughs> when he first went ten years ago, we had no idea, so we started fishing in ponds and lakes. There was an old chap fishing in one of the lakes where we went, and we caught some odd things. They nearly all got teeth, these things. You've got to be a bit careful when you fish. It's going to have bites. And we fished uh, from the coast in Bahia, first of all, spinning, and Richard caught a uh, small Kubera snapper, which was the only one we caught from there. And we used the usual tactics, I say, there's me, we can't bear again. And we caught a huge variety of little fish, all of which would go through the slats in these fish traps. So they wouldn't catch these, they'd only catch the bigger stuff. And you catch so many little fish, it isn't true. This is if you use a bit of prawn and stick it out, it's what I was saying, you know, you use the same tactics, that's what you catch. Not necessarily the same fish, but you catch the little one. They're funny, they've got poisonous spines those leather the jacket. And they're like it's like a mirror finish on them, it's incredibly bright finish. And even the ladyfish, but even the ladyfish, you know, we catch, we catch them in, in uh, Tobago and the, this size, but in Brazil they're like this, the ones we catch. And I think they've just been, basically been filtered out by all the traps. Yeah. And there's even mullet there. there. There are some big mullet, but I've not found out, I've never seen them in a place where I thought I could catch them yet. If you try any sort of bait, other things take it all the time. Uh, the locals put out a seine net, a small fine mesh seine net like this. I mean that's just a little mullet. That mullet's probably about six <coughs> inch long, something like that. And they put the seine net out on the beach, two of, the, two of them usually. Uh, they'll walk it out about 100 yards and then just pull it in on the beach. And they catch Dozens, all them, all them sort of things I was just showing you, all those little fish you catch things like that. <coughs> and Richard tried fishing off the reef itself with lures and he catch, oh that's his favourite, the lizard fish. <laughs> they're unbelievable them things. How they managed to catch lures going at 100 miles an hour, I don't know if they can. They're fantastic. Horrible. Various groupers and gurnards and snapper and all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's the kayak thing again. 
won't show you all these again. Then he got, then he got a two-man kayak, which isn't much better than the one-man kayak, <laughs> you know, except I can sit in this one. And what we do now, it's all a bit like the bat. It, it was after I started catching bass on these free line bits. He said, oh, I'll try that, Dad, in the kayak. And it works. It's amazing. Then we catch, you can catch half a dozen stingrays between sort of 20 and 30 pound in a, in a you know, couple of hours in the evening. He hasn't got long to fish because he's got two kids at home. He, he can only creep out when he's allowed. <laughs> and I'm not going in his one-man kayak on my own. <laughs> big snappers. Big catfish. They're nasty. I've still got the lump on this finger from two years ago when I got stung by them. They have a, um, the pectoral fins and the dorsal fin have got a spine on and it didn't half hurt. Oh, that's, uh, this is just a shore fishing. That's, that, that's the rock where we fish for the snow. And they're covered in, I think they've probably got a picture. See the little black mussels on there? Mm. Well, Going across the fish one morning in the dark, and I put my foot in a hole instead. I thought it was a patch of mussels, and it was a hole, and the knee went on the mussels, and it just, like having a grater, you know. Oh. Oh. Well, that's how I'm getting too old, <laughs> And we've got all sorts of other stuff off these rocks. So, so although the snooker, you, you know, you <coughs> don't get a fish for a day or two, you'll always catch other things. Big leather jackets again. The jacks, not big jacks like the ones we caught in Tobago. We had them up to sort of 20 odd pounds in Tobago. <coughs> that was a, a blue runner I think. And now we found that we can catch bigger jacks from the sandy beach. And I know it says they, they make bass as well look feeble these things. I mean they are incredible when you open these jacks. Fantastic fish. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was wading out. He, in fact he told me, he, he, he emailed me this week and he'd been out fishing from this beach where he had this jack. All those fishers teach, you think that's a good idea, Wade? I think I should have lost a fish. I'm not going into that. <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> but he'd been out, he said, he, he said there were some logs drifting in the sea, and he'd waded out to try and fish a bit further out with his, with his lure. He was, using a, he was using a wedge when he was fishing there. And he said, he said, he was sort of keeping an eye on these logs in case one of them cracked him in the legs, you know, because the, the waves were moving him about. He said, he suddenly looked out and there was a wave <laughs> up here coming towards him, which you don't normally get. And it hammered him down to his knees, apparently, to this wave. And uh, dropped the rod in the drink. So I think that stopped his day's fishing. You can see these jacks, he's, he's got the hang of his castle a lot further than me as well. He wasn't a sort of a national javelin throw for nothing. And my, my shoulder really is great. But this is what I was going to show you. The fish trap. One evening we, we walked past the fish trap after this fish. This chap had just come back with that. All those big jacks in a you know, sack. They were all sort of ten. Those fish. So occasionally you get big bags of fish that must be within yards of the beach because these traps are not very far out. And the last time I was there, which was January. Uh, the, for the first time ever, just outside the house, Richard lives near the beach. There were some blokes had put out a big seine net, about must have been a quarter of a mile, and there was ten of them hauling this thing in. They had it really well organised. I've never seen these blokes before. They obviously do it for for money, and they had uh, they had a, each had a belt on with a little bit of rope that they, they had somehow hitched around the the seine net rope. And then they walked back till they got to the end and then took it off and back to the front of the line again. And eventually they got this thing in. In that net, they didn't have, they had a lot of the usual small stuff, but they had this sort of 
80 pound Kubera snapper that they've got. So they're out there where we, me and him are sitting in this, this little kayak. God knows what would happen if you hooked one of those. <laughs> I mean, they are incredible 